Hugo, thank you very much. We we overcame uh, some technical glitches, and now you are uh, you're, you're you're nice and clear. You got uh, great video, uh, and I was just talking to Stefan about the uh, about the uh, eHealth Week on Malta uh, next week, which I'm coming to, uh, and we've got uh, some social media ambassadors that are, are watching. And uh, so I, I, it sounds to me like you have played a ple key role in, in setting up that conference as well as creating the, the kind of the conditions, the environment uh, necessary to host it. Um, tell us, you know, so who is Hugo uh, Muscat and uh, how did you end up there doing what you're doing and what can we look forward to next week? Okay, well, I'm, uh, I'm a doctor by training. I'm um, qualified back in 1985. Um, uh, I did vocational training in family medicine, and um, then one fine day, purely by coincidence, I found myself in the field of health informatics. And the way that happened was that they, uh, the government was implementing uh, an IT system in the in the health center where I was working, and um, well, I didn't quite like it. And I told them, "Sure, you can do better than this." And the project manager said, um, uh, "Well, if you think you're so smart, why don't you help us?" And I took up the challenge, and that was the, um, the beginning of the end, because from then on, I got sucked in slowly but surely into the world of health IT. It was early days. It was That was around 1988, 89. Um, um, but um, I realized it was something I wanted to do. In a sense, it was a bit like Stefan was saying earlier, um, um, decided that this was something I really wanted to do. And um, I did a master's. Um, and, uh, uh, in health information science at the work of Warwick University in in the UK, and then came back to Malta. And um, um, I remember the chief medical officer told me, "Now that you have done this course, you should switch to public health." And um, and um, there was no looking back. Then I became the director of health information. It was mainly epidemiology work. It was early days for computers in Malta, but then we started changing our manual registers to computerized. Then we started implementing our first systems in hospitals, patient administration system and other systems. And uh, one thing led to another and uh, the IT um, penetration in Malta grew and grew and grew. Um, and um, the end result is that I've always been associated with e-health. Um, IT systems in Malta um, took a great leap forward in nine, in, uh, 10 years ago in 2007. When Mater Dei Hospital was opened, our main acute hospital, um, um, if, if you have time, you could actually visit it on the Thursday of next week. There's a hospital visit organized. Um, and Mater Dei Hospital um, was an opportunity to introduce a number of new, of new systems like a, a PAX throughout the hospital, which doesn't only serve Mater Dei, but also serves other government hospitals and um, health centers. And actually, that's one of the key things you will notice looking in Malta, that because of its small and compact size, um, government has always rolled out the main systems across the board. So they basically become nationwide um, uh, deployments. Um, and all this is helped by the fact that we have a unique pa patient identifier, it's the same as the national ID number, and that obviously makes record linkage uh, much easier, and uh, it's, it's much easier to um, uh, link together records. So things started joining up very easily. So we introduced the new packs. We introduced an integrated laboratory system, um, uh, an electronic case summary system for people being discharged from hospital, and various other bits and pieces, a cardiology system, an oncology system. It's, it's been a growth path since then. Um, uh, we're making progress. Another thing we're proud of is the My Health portal. Um, uh, that's a... Uh, uh, an online portal for uh, patients and for their doctors, in this case, private family doctors. One thing I should say is that private family doctors, most of them solo GPs, play a, an important part in the delivery of care in Malta. So whereas secondary care is very much uh, rotates around what government does, um, there are a lot of um, private family doctors who a lot of patients trust as the fulcrum for their care. And my health, the My Health portal was meant to bridge the gap, which we sometimes had in uh, communications, both human and data communications between um, um, what happens at hospital and what happens with private family doctors. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know how much time you have. I'm, I'm, I, I don't. Yeah, I, I, we, I, 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 will, I, will I don't stop very easily. We have, we actually, we have about. We don't want to spend all half hour uh, on this, but we technically we have about a half hour more uh, available in, uh, before Fire Talk says, "Okay, you're at your ninety minutes." So yeah. I'm happy to. So so con now tell it's us okay. kind of Let, segue to. The, Let's segue to the to the conference. Exactly. Let me link over to eHealth Week now. Well, um, Stefan, while I was while I couldn't sort of speak, um, uh, gave you a good uh, uh, overview. It's linked to the first semester presidency of the Council of the EU. Mm -hmm. um, it's been, happened. It's been that way since Berlin in two thousand and seven. Um, that it's been that way. Um, Hims used to have a separate conference in Europe called World of Health IT which it now still holds separately. It had one in Barcelona last autumn. But um, uh, at one point in time, um, the, the European Commission and the HIMSS saw an opportunity to merge the two. And in fact, eHealth Week um, uh, from 2010 became a co-located conference. So we've got the high-level conference, which is policy-based, which is run by the presidency and the commission. And you've got the more technology-oriented, uh, avant-garde, um, uh, tech, tech, techie part, which is uh, pushed by HIMS, and HIMS also uh, targets the industry and targets hospital CIOs. They are different target audiences. One new feature this year is that um, WHO have got in um, strongly on the act, so the regional office is going to have a big presence in the, in the conference this year. So it's, there's really some uh, something for everyone, really, in the conference. Um, you referred also to other e-health weeks. Well, um, in a sense, the anti-globalization trend is, is, is taking grip of e-health week. Because now you have e-health week for the Nordic countries. You have e-health week uh, for, in the UK. It's actually running this week in, 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 in England. You have e-health week in the, in the Benelux countries. It's in Liège. This, um, 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 you, you've got the different e-health weeks. And I've heard that. Greece is interested in having, it already has its own e-health forum and it's trying to pull in other Mediterranean countries in on the act. So I put it down to an anti-globalization trend, which we've seen, you know, um, all over the world. You, 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 you've heard President Trump talking about thinking, um, bringing things back home. And, uh, and it's not just in the US, we're, we're having this in different parts of the world. So it's interesting to see whether the, the general e-health movement will, uh, sort of regional e -head movement will, will survive. Um, um, certainly we're going to have Estonia who are going to plug strongly for their own e-health week in, Oct in October. Um, I, I think I, it, it's, not, it's not sales pitch. There really will be something for everybody. One thing I should say is that the uh, um, commission has an embargoed communication about the, its midterm review of its digital single market strategy. And um, that will be released on the 10th of May, which is the first day of the conference. So you can expect um, a hot off the press announcement from the European Commission about the digital single market strategy. Um, I'm very happy to know that there's at least a dozen um, folk coming over from the United States. Um, the, um, I think it's about four years ago, don't quote me on the date, but around four years ago, a memorandum of cooperation was signed between the EU and the US on uh, matters which regard e-health and the commission has worked closely with the office of the national coordinator in, in the States. Um, and uh, that work is coming to fruition. There was work with a project called um, Trillium Bridge in which mm -hmm. Catherine Kronaki had a big part to play and, uh, and, uh, and her counterparts in the US. And um, now there's Trillium Bridge 2 or, or it will be called something similar to that. And uh, the work done on the so-called International Patient Summary is starting to mature. Uh, Europe has its own version. It used to be the EPSOS project. Now it's uh, called other things, but um, it's being funded by European funds, the Connecting Europe facility. Um, Malta is one of the countries which is working with countries. You mentioned Lisbon earlier. It's working with Portugal and, uh, and uh, Italy and, uh, and uh, Luxembourg and uh, Sweden and various other countries to have cross-border exchange of patient summaries and e-prescriptions. Well, the international patient summary involves very much the same people from the EU side, and their common goal is to have an agreed format so that 
um, not only between the EU and the US and between EU countries, but even with other partners across the world, we'll have an agreed format based mainly on HL7CDA as, as its um, uh, framework um, to uh, agreed and commonly agreed uh, to exchange in commonly agreed formats and patient summaries for uh, so that records move with with uh, with people uh, as they move around the world. So you yeah. hear about that. We've got summaries. There are also things which there's all. It's always worth comparing notes in these conferences. The EU has two important pieces of legislation that which are going on stream next year. One is the General Data Protection Regulation, and the other one is the Network and Information Security Directive. And they they're all important because a big value in the EU is that yes, we do encourage uptake of technology, but we do it within a strong um, uh, legislative framework. And the privacy and security legislation is, is very strong um, in Europe. Um, uh, and people are always sort of discussing, if not arguing, as to how to uh, go fast with technology uptake without um, uh, um, surrendering or uh, um, risking any of, of our agreed uh, standards on uh, security and privacy. And there are plenty of sessions on these. If you have a look at the, the health program online, there's a lot of focus on uh, on studying and discussing these various controversies and dilemmas. Uh, I think you're the right person to ask a question. Uh, I've been I've been reading about a kind of European health policy, uh, cross border health policies, uh, just because it's a great opportunity. Uh, and by the way, uh, many years ago, I took uh, a course in medical sociology from the father of medical sociology, a guy named Odin Anderson. Uh, and he was the oh, first yeah. guy, he was the first, he was at the University of Chicago, and he uh, he was the first person to systematically compare countries in terms of how they pay for systems, how they pay for treatment, and the outcomes. Uh, and uh, anyway, but 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 here's, so I, I kind of, um, I can't remember how, exactly why I focused on this area, but but here in the United States, we have many different insurance companies, and when you go to uh, see a physician or go into the hospital, they have what's called a certification or prior certification or authorization or prior authorization. And that is, do, do, does the insurance plan that you participate in pay for the thing that you're about to have done? Uh, and it's complicated. <clears throat> yes. And it's and because, because you have the, all the different payers, okay? So, uh, you know, so I being a naive person, I said, oh, well that, you know, that you, there, is, there is no prior authorization in the, in the, in the EU because uh, the government pays for everything. And then, but then I searched and I start and I found uh, a, a website, I believe that, uh, that Stefan uh, referred me to. They had a bunch of white papers, uh, some like 200 pages long. And, and there was one where they talk about, uh, so, so I, apparently some number of years ago, healthcare was, was a, uh, uh, deemed a civil right within the, 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 e, the EU. But if you're in France, but you're a citizen of Italy, uh, you have a right to health care, but then you have to get reimbursed across the border or, the, or one country has to reimburse the other country. Yeah. And, and that kind of reminded me a little bit of the insurance companies. You know what I mean? Because, oh, the, you, so so from the, from the distance, well, it's 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 different. But yet these work, the idea of medical necessity and and checking to make sure that uh, treatment is sort of authorized is, is, is a global universal sort of workflow issue. Uh, and I just kind of was wondering uh, how that maps to the IT, the, you know, so uh, are, are there, are, is there going to be like a France API, healthcare API, and then Italy healthcare API, and then you call the API to find out coverage? Because that's the way the insurance companies are going here. Ooh, well, that's 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 what, how much time do we have? Yeah, look, uh, well, the, the, we, got, we, we got okay, you got you got about five minutes, maybe 10 uh, okay. to address this issue, and then we'll get yeah, stuff because it's, it's a, yeah. do your best, do your best. Yeah, it's a challenge to answer that. Um, when you're a mortal, we'll have a chat about this. Well, the the piece of legislation in the EU which is most relevant is the so called cross border healthcare directive, and this is um, this regulates what services people are entitled to EU citizens when, when crossing from one EU member state to another. The EU has uh, four freedoms, the freedom of movement of people, services, and so on. And uh, the implementation of the, the freedom of movement requires that, that if um, 
I, as a Maltese citizen, go to France and fall ill, then uh, the French government is required to actually treat me as if it were treating a French citizen. Now, um, um, there, there is a lot of commonality between EU member states and the package of services that it gives um, to, to, um, to its citizens, but, but there are differences. So, so there are pretty complex rules which, which say um, that you have to be treated like the, um, um, as if you were a citizen of the country you, you are, you're in. So if, if I fall ill in France, then I have to be treated as if I were a French citizen. Then the bills are paid through the social security system talking to each other. Um, now, actually, the exchange of health data and the exchange of social security data are two parallel but separate mechanisms. So there, there are um, long established systems for reimbursement across borders um, and systems. Um, and each member state is required to declare its, uh, its costs against its uh, health package. And those are the basis for the reimbursements which take place across borders. Now, this is a double-edged sword because um, people have been afraid that um, um, of cross-border flows, which are motivated by, um, by, uh, by profit uh, motivation. Um, I think people are afraid that there would be very heavy um, patient, cross-border patient flows because of this, when this directive was um, enacted, um, I think it was five years ago now. But in reality, they've been more modest. Having said that, the EU is still very keen on, uh, on uh, consolidating this cross-border patient flow, but it's doing it um, uh, bit by bit with specific initiatives. For example, one of the interesting initiatives are the European reference networks. Um, and European reference networks try to pool um, expertise across um, um, different jurisdictions, different countries, in order to give the best care to um, EU citizens across um, European, European borders um, um, and, then, and also help to structure the, these cross-border flows. Um, one of the ones which is um, gaining traction very quickly is the idea of treating people with rare diseases in reference centers. So we pool data on people who have rare diseases um, and then treat them in the best reference centers across Europe. Um, it's quite a competitive process in the political sense, but that's why I told you how much time do I have because this is a very deep subject which you brought up. But to keep it simple, um, we do have mechanisms which, I mean, the, the commonest cross-border flow is with um, uh, people going on holiday. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, um, you know, elderly citizens come to Malta for the sun and then they fall ill here and then we treat them in Malta, and then we send the bill to the UK or Italy or Germany or wherever they came from. And we do that on the basis of our declared costs, which, uh, which, which we have to report um, to the appropriate uh, structures. And we are, we are monitored, you, so, you, um, so you can't get away with murder. Um, well, that's not a really bad word to use in the healthcare environment, but you know what I mean. Bad and you, you can't really... App. Killer app is not a good word. Good <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you can, well you, we, you, you, we're not allowed to rip off each other, or if we try, we, we quickly be, be taken, uh, um, put under control. I mean, I, mean, I, I always, I, well, I admire America for, uh, for its uh, leading role it plays a lot of things which have to do with IT and health IT. I mean, as I mentioned earlier, we settled on, on HL7 CDA because it's, it's a, and, and, and I'm a great proponent of SNOMED CT, which was born in, uh, with the American College of Pathologists. So, so you know, we, we, here in Europe, we like to borrow things American when we think that, that it's, it's, the, it's the good stuff, but, um, but we don't imitate everything. And we don't want our GDP to shoot through the roof as yeah. is happening yeah. in America. Um, I know a lot of HMOs are, are doing a lot of smart things to, yeah. to control the situation, but not everyone in America, in my opinion, yeah. Yeah. is doing everything that can be done to stop yeah. the, 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 the profiteering which goes on in the, in the delivery of healthcare, and let me stop yeah. there. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, and, and, and give me a, a one minute, and then we're gonna try to get uh, Stefan and 
and Danielle on here too. And Hugo, I hope you'll stay here because I can host up to two. two. Uh, I, I, my, I, I, as a social media ambassador, you, you write three blog posts. And the first blog post, which I think I'll, I'll try to get to you somehow, or, uh, and it was about, I, as an industrial engineer who went to medical school, I'm very interested in workflow. Therefore, I'm very interested in workflow technology. Uh, well, interestingly enough, the most advanced research and the early companies in, in business process management or workflow management systems were European. Um, uh, mm -hmm. sta Staffware, which became Sorian, yep. uh, was uh, UK. Uh, you, of course, you have a wide variety of uh, BPM companies in the Netherlands and Germany, and they're being acquired and brought over. Uh, and so I, and, and I wrote, so I wrote, so, so, uh, so I actually quote myself from my blog from 2009 or 10, in which I, I go on and say, uh, the U.S. is very myopic in not in the, the NIH, meaning not invented here syndrome. And that is yeah. that there's, there's that the first, the first seven or nine international workflow technology conferences, all were held in Europe, except one, which was held in Brisbane. Um, and, uh, you know, so, so from my perspective, I mean, going back a decade, I've been looking at Europe uh, as, as, as basically the wellsprung or wellspring, whatever, from which the, work, the, the modern workflow concepts now that are starting to be retrofit into health IT here in the United States. It's, it's, it's just fascinating to, 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 to look at the provenance, to tra track back and say, yeah. well, and often it's, it's a person, one person who was educated uh, in, in, in Europe who comes to be a professor at a university. And that's kind of the route by which, and they have students and then they go to work for the health IT companies, which obviously it takes decades for that mechanism to work. Uh, but anyway, so um, thank you, Hugo. 